Hey guys, Feral here with a new guide for you all. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to most efficiently farm Mythic Island Expeditions with a special vendor item called the Rabbit's Charm. If you watched my videos for a while, you know how much I don't like Island Expeditions in their current state. However, every 8 weeks there is a certain vendor that pops up who is named Pump on a Log, funny name, that sells Rabbit's Charms for one doubloon. This item will give you a 30 minute buff that makes you very hard to detect from nearby mobs, excluding the opposite faction AI NPCs. While it's on, you can avoid almost every creature on the island and just loot from the Azerite chests, the Azerite fissures, and all the Azerite mining nodes on the map. This method is significantly faster than just trying to kill the insanely high health mobs on the island, making it ideal for your mount or pet or transmog farms. Remember, you don't actually have to kill anything on the item, or rather, on the island to get the item that you want. Um, so as long as the mob is present on the island, the chance of the items that drop from that mob will be given to you at the end, as like a random roll chance. When it comes to this method, the worst obstacle you run into is random pathing mobs that you accidentally aggro. If it's an elite, it's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> uh, most of them have like one-shot abilities. Uh, and the worst part is that you can't even run away from these to make them reset because most island mobs don't have a leash and they tend to chain pull each other. So it's just a disaster. So with this in mind, the best classes for this are rogues and feral druids. Having vanish and incarnation, and incarnation comes with a, uh, a vanish with it, is enormously beneficial if you need to drop combat. Rogues also have sap and blind, making them convenient for slipping into the denser packs that have a lot of pathing mobs without pulling aggro. Uh, druids have mass root, which can stop some pesky mobs from pathing into you. Um, druids also can stay in travel form just about for the entire island. They can like loot the chest, they can loot the nodes, they can loot the fissures. It's kind of crazy, so ultimately I think that feral druids come out on top when it comes to um, this method, so if you have a druid, spec feral, and just start running these. Um, when it comes to racial benefits, the best one is going to be, well honestly the only one that matters is the night elf shadow meld, because that's a quick way to drop combat. Um, and if you have some gold to spare, uh, dark moon fire water is a pretty decent investment. This allows you to mine azurite nodes faster, even if your character doesn't have mining. So. Uh, they can be kind of pricey, I think I get them for about like 90 gold to 110 gold per, and they last 60 minutes I think, but they do expire when you die, so um, be very careful when you decide to use the Dark Moon Firewater. Once you arrive, buy your rabbit charm and use it. You can have five on you at a time, but they are account bound so you can mail them to your alts. There's no limit as to how many you can have in your mailbox, so try to stock up for the other seven weeks where the rabbit charm vendor is not active. Your group should split up to cover more ground. Try to avoid fighting the opposite faction NPCs because they are more trouble than they're worth. Keep an eye out for an item called the Volatile All Cure on the island. This is a specific quest item that can actually be stacked. If your squad casts it at the same time on the quest mob, you can get the Azerite rewards three times in a row. And that comes up to 2100 Azerite, so that's pretty significant if you all three manage to do it. When the week is over and you have saved up a hefty amount of charms, hopefully, when you've sent it to your alts, locate other people who have also stocked up. I recommend the Discord communities that focus on mounts, like the Secret Finding Discord or the Official Mount Discord. They form groups for these often, and you basically never have to endure the terrible, normal way of doing islands ever again. <laughs> and that's just about it. This is a pretty simple method that everyone can do, as long as you have a little, like, one doubloon or something. You're gonna earn back all the doubloons that you need after the first island, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I wish you guys luck with this. I hope you guys have fun with this, because I certainly have a lot of fun doing it, because I get mounts and stuff. It's great, and it's not terrible, so <laughs> thanks again, guys, and see you in the next video.